Well, I've managed to get a lift today um, to Crowden Car Park. And I have to say, this is one of the walks that I have been looking forward to. Um, today, we are going to be walking to St. James Chapel. Um, it's, uh, you may be able to see it sometimes as you drive along the Woodhead Pass. And it's a chapel with a huge amount of history on this particular valley. And I'm really excited to say that I've got two people who are part of um, the local community who want to bring this chapel back into use. Over the years it's had a number of trustees who've kept it ticking over but it's fair to say time hasn't always been kind to this chapel. So we're going to walk, it'll be about, we think, less than half an hour along a public footpath. Uh, you can do this too. We'd recommend maybe bring some water, some food. Don't do, uh, don't do this in bad weather. But we're going to stay low today. We're going to follow along the lower paths and not go high up where Crowden Quarry is. But here, once upon a time, there were more than a hundred households. Um, this was a bustling village. It had a pub called the Commercial Inn. You know, right now it's got the signs here that we're just passing for the youth hostel and uh, it's a popular place to come walking put it that way uh, the car park is busy today so we're going to take a gate which um, signposts for a public footpath not the big gate where the tarmac road is that's private property but Richard is just opening the gate here and the sign says Northern House route, Horse Route Woodhead Reservoir three kilometers richard and meriel thanks so much for joining me today and this is almost your your back garden really this because is, you this, you this are crowden our, locals of which there are not many of you back garden of which we're very proud yes. and and which we enjoy and we do a certain amount of rubbish clearing over here so we empty the dustbin every week for the for the car park yeah and Meryl's husband, Dave, cuts the grass up and down some, some of the roads to keep things looking quite nice. And it does look beautiful here. I have to say, I've come here many times of the year and it's such a lovely, peaceful place to be. Although it's so close to the road, there's just, it's just a lovely, great place to be. It is peaceful and it is close to the road, which is a bit of a paradox. Yeah. But sometimes it's quite nice to have all the traffic going past to think, well... This is the real world, but then you can sort of get away to the peace of, of the woods and, and the hills and the quarries, quite a lot of quarries, and of course the chapel, which is a building that we, that we, that we enjoy. And Merrill's taking forward a lot of efforts to just try and reinvigorate the, the building of the chapel and try and make sure it's still here in 20 years' time in its lovely site and in its lo lo lovely design and some, well, and some of the history of the, gra of the graves as well. I think, and we're going to actually help as part of this project you keep that building alive yes. because we want to put this very firmly on the map for Londondale yes. Tales yes. Yes. and we have documents which have the history of um, the chapel which of some kind of guise goes back to 1487 although the building that we're entering today has moved and is a different building since 1487 but all the different people who have uh, been the ministers or the, or the vicars over the year, I imagine, yes. they would have been walking this path that we're walking today. So we'll just walk through the forest. Um, you can see all the pine cones on the floor. We're following the border of a fence and the tree house to the right. And in a moment, uh, it'll open up as we go through a gate to some more green grass kind of land. So it's a clear route. You can see that hundreds thousands of people have probably walked this same route that we're doing now Richard. Well John Davis who used to live at the railway cottages at the other side of the valley from here um, his father worked on the railways and worked on the tele telegraph as well and John used to go to the school which is next to my house in the old vicarage and was saying how they used to take it in turns to go up and ring the bell on on, 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 on certain days and the old vicarage the school next to the old vicarage was used um, 
when the school finished on Friday evenings, John, who passed away some years ago, and the school closed in 1927, but he was one of my patients, was saying how they'd clear the school out, ready for, for bingo or local social functions on, on Saturdays or dances on Saturdays. So there's quite a close link between the, the school and the valley. There used to be far, well, there used to be more farms in the valley um, at that time. In fact, there were a lot more farms in the valley before the reservoirs were built and before the railways were built. Um, but well, while the railways were being built and while the reservoirs were being built, which was, I believe, during the Irish potato famines, there were a lot of Irish uh, and other and other. Uh, labourers working in the valley and it was very busy there, yeah. were, there were five um, uh, inns and five inns what in in, in this part in, of the in valley the, in this part yeah. of, in, in this in this part of the valley uh, and it was it was it was very busy but the actual accommodation oh we're just going around a treat <laughs> that the workers were living in was not not really very good no and I imagine uh, so cold I mean looking at the archive photos of this particular area, when they got snow, they got snow big time, didn't they? Well, certainly when we, I moved here, I was working in Manchester when I moved here and I wasn't sure whether I would be able to carry on working as a family doctor in Manchester, being on call. Um, and I was aware of some of the photographs of large snowfalls in 1947, 1946, I think, when it was yes. about 10 foot deep. So before I moved here, I was living in Chorlton in Manchester. I drove out here for two mornings to drive in to work to see what it was like, which was satisfactory. But I also thought they'd always keep this road clear, um, which they have done. So it, for, for, as far as I was concerned, that's always been OK. okay. But as you said, they do have some quite heavy snowfalls. Well, one of the yeah. things that I did actually read as part of the research was we found the diary of the outdoor supervisor, the reservoir supervisor oh, yeah. of 1853 and 1854. His handwriting is beautiful. I could barely read most of it, but and the first week of 1854, he was constantly talking about snowdrift and how he couldn't get to the places that he needed to. Yeah. So that year was uh, not a great start to continue in building that section of the reservoir. So these are magical stories. Um, you know, it kind of, the, the sense that there are not as many people living here now, you know, it, it's, it's hard to imagine, I think, for people who are new to this area or maybe haven't really, you know, actually truly looked to kind of think about all these farms and all these inns and, well, the road, you know, the, the people road, working here. The road, the road through the valley was, was very busy. It was the Salt Road, and I think it was probably thousands of years old. There was a Roman fort only about half a mile down the valley from yes. here. Yep. And the five inns, as you go up the road, were really similar to service stations now yes, yep. on a motorway. Yep. And I think it's probably true to say that some stages on the Salt Road, where the road widens, uh, there were places where people would park up but also possibly where trade would take place that have small farmers markets and things like that. Yeah. And you actually see one beside the church, I think, where it's, you can see it's wider, and yeah. that's where people used to park, park It's a good car meeting place. Yes, but yeah. well, it took a long time. Well, they didn't horse. have WhatsApp back then, so... Well, they didn't have very fast transport, <laughs> did they? <laughs> and if you're pulling a, a wagon, which has got heavy goods up these hills, you're going to, it's going to be much slower yeah. than, than you are today but also I think they used to trade together so that the people would come over and they'd swap their goods or sell their goods sell their goods to each other yeah and interestingly the other day um had a chat with Roger Hargreaves from Glossop Heritage Trust and Glossop Archaeological Society and if you haven't listened to that episode I'd, I'd highly recommend if you're listening to pop back and listen to that we start walking from Crowden Station along Woodhead Reservoir the south side and we talk about the the salt paths and the yeah. turnpike roads and we're gonna hook on to a bit of the turnpike road aren't we as we yes. approach the chapel i'll just say where we are now we've um come out from the forest uh there's a a gate which is pretty obvious so once was a a climbing style but that's no longer in use and then we're taking directly right which is a slightly muddy path staying low not going high up towards where all the, the stones are so stay low mariel you know 
it must be amazing to kind of live and walk this. You said to me, you know, you like to cycle, you walk. How much do you enjoy getting around and discovering this place? Absolutely love it. We came here probably about seven years ago, but I had walked here previously. Um, and it's a really great community. We set up a residence association after COVID and everybody is very friendly who lives here. Mm. And we've worked together to try and get the area nice for people to visit. This is our back garden. So basically, my husband still works. When he finishes work, grab the dogs, go into the back garden and walk as far as we can. Yeah, yeah. Usually along sheep paths, because there are not a lot of um, proper paths here uh, that are on the Ordnance Survey maps. This one is, because it's obviously the Northern Horse Route. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, actually? Because this little kind of path that we've got, I call it like the pink path. So uh-huh. it's like a national park pathway, isn't it? Yes. Which isn't on, say, the paper copy of the map. But then I do find it interesting in a place like this where... You know, there's sometimes these things called desire lines, as town planners call them, Uh where people have kind of almost formed their own path over years and years, almost as a bit of a shortcut. Um, And that's, I think, when you truly know the landscape, because you almost get to know an area so well that you don't really have to follow a map. You just know all the little kind of shortcuts and cut throughs. Legally, I've got to say, not trespassing. Lots of it is open access land. Yes. Um, but you'll find because people walk it that, like you say, there are pathways like this that people can follow quite clearly. Yeah. I think what I really, the walks I've kind of done when I wanted to challenge myself from Crowden have been up towards Lado Rocks. Yes. And I've done that in August and I've been bilberry picking and you're surrounded by the purple heather, uh-huh. which you literally get for about three weeks or so, don't you? It's beautiful. And I just feel beautiful. like August this is a this is a walk I will always do because it's just a magical place to be you know there are like caves and rocks and there's climbing things and there's people mountain biking there's people fell running and you know it's a, it's a great place but then even a walk like this is actually I think relatively straightforward not too complicated that if people are just starting out and finding their feet with children with young children as well we use the heather for our wedding oh lovely it's beautiful when it's out absolutely beautiful right well we'll just stop for a second because we've reached another gate and you can see straight in front of us um st james chapel and it is brilliant because i think when i have kind of come to this point before i've really kind of imagined the vicar coming here you know twice a day in summer to come and ring the bell once a day in winter to come and ring the bell and you really do feel like you're kind of walking the paths of people that have been here so many years so, so think about the residents of Crowden now or who used to live here when the mill was across the road because there was a big mill across the road yes so the mill owner's house and next door, if you imagine all of those walking up to worship at the church, it's amazing. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Let's um, open this gate. Richard, this, um, I think we should mention how you, Mary and uh, Mariel and, and a bunch of other people have ended up getting involved in, in kind of bringing this place back into use because you spent hours as a group of people cleaning, tidying, clearing the graveyards, doing spreadsheets, researching history. I mean, like, it, it, why? And, well, it's, and it's, it's, it's very pleasant. I think it's always nice to have um, objectives and, and projects. I like, I, like, I like projects. And so I think we like working, like working together. I mean, I'm going to be doing some more preparation for decoration at the chapel chapel today it's also um so that's why you've got your painting gear on and is, you've got your painting well the painting the, the, well no this is my lunch my tiffin <laughs> my tiffin lunch and coffee in, in 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 here and i'm also meeting somebody else up there who's going to help possibly replace or fix some wood paneling to, to the walls so i can actually finish finish some of the caulking before before i do the decorating 
Um, it, it is also, though, I think it's nice to have a common, uh, common business in a community. So I think it means we've all got something, or well, not all, because everybody, not everybody wants to be involved, but it's nice to have something that you're doing together. Yes. And some of it's administration, some of it's very complicated legal assessment, even though we're not lawyers, to try and assess what the requ- legal requirements are for a body of trustees to take over an expired charity status to continue to look after the functions of a building mm. and to set the objectives. But maybe we're all a bit strange, but I mean, different people enjoy different things, but it is, it is very enjoyable. Yeah. So Dennis, um, who I believe is 76 years old, I hope he doesn't mind me saying that, is a retired fireman, but he loves projects like this. So he's really keen that we get some proper German spruce gutters to put up there because we've got the least amount of sap in. So we're going to get some scaffolding. He says, I'm not so neat on my feet as I used to be, but I think I can manage to get it done. (laughs) And we've looked at whether we can get another door, oak door, for the outside of the outer door of the church. We've been to Jack Badger in Glossop, very nice organisation, but it probably costs £7,000 for a new oak door. So we probably won't do it. But it's interesting, it's nice going to visit, nice going to go and visit Jack Badger, see how they work. And also, I think there's an enjoyment for me seeing the standard of stonework and woodwork uh, in the chapel and the stonemasonry actually on the gravestones from 200 years ago. Some of them are beautifully inscribed. And as a past family doctor, it's sad but interesting to see some of the early premature deaths of people 150, 200, 200 years ago which I think all of those things together can be quite, could be quite useful if a primary school was able to get, or secondary school, able to get the pupils here. There's, there's a lot to teach, or a lot to learn. Um, so, it, it, and of course, well, I mean, people who are mainly involved are retired, so we have the time. I think if people weren't, retire, weren't retired, it would be, obviously be more difficult. No, but I think there are probably quite a number of people who might walk in this area and are always keen to say you know I wonder what it's like inside I wonder what the history of this is so I suppose there will be people who may want to help and you do have a Facebook page I understand um, where people can find out more again we'll put a link to that in the episode description Um, but one of the things I suppose I was really interested when uh, I started researching um, this particular valley you know, finding out the person who kind of commissioned the original chapel, which we think was a little bit further up the valley, um, mostly made of wood, I understand. That doesn't sound too wise, but I suppose they did what they did in the back in the day. Yes. But 1487, a chap called Sir Edward Shah, who went on to become the mayor of London, yes. had ties to Stockport in various forms. When he died, kind of left a pot of money and said, I want a chapel and here's a bit of extra cash to pay for a vicar to go in there um, and keep it going. But obviously (laughs) his uh, inheritance didn't last too long and then it relied on people of this area to kind of dip in and um, donate or rebuild in various guises over the years. Yes, looking at some of the history that... um Mary, my wife, and there was some funding made available in the time of Queen Anne. She had some sort of, maybe you've seen that, she had some fund to help, help with the rebuild yep. at that time. But how the money was raised at other times, I don't know. Um, Edward Shaw supposedly was a local man, possibly from Mottram. And I imagine he used to travel over this route to get to the Great North Road yeah. to go down to London yep. to do his jeweller's business. And then, as you know, he became the jeweller to Edward IV and Lord Mayor of London for a year. So I suppose he had a good time, probably very gifted, very able. Yeah. And he endowed, left an endowment for Stockport Grammar School, um, a new tower on Mottram Church and for a chapel here yeah. and a stipend for prayers to be said for him <laughs> every month. <laughs> and, his, and his parents. Oh, was that it? Was, that was the, yes. Yeah. I'd seen that. I'd, 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 I'd forgotten that. <laughs> well, we've um, just come off the the green grassy path through another gate 
where there was uh, like a little, it's like a concrete bucket. What do you even call those things? It's like to That's the weight, to the, the the weight yeah. Counter-balance. And, then um, what's the sinkhole? <laughs> and you can see, well, you can probably hear actually, we're right next to Woodhead Pass, but there is a tarmacked path which goes up to the church, which isn't for cars. We've got to stress that. If you want to come and visit this, we'd suggest you walk, don't drive, because you will not be able to get back down. And it gets very steep, and it's not too great if your car is pretty low to the ground. Um, But we're now walking up, and it's almost like as you walk up this steep tarmac path, for a moment the church disappears, and all you can see are the moorlands all around you, and just get a nice little break from the cars, just to kind of hear the planes above you, and you see the pylons, which obviously wouldn't have been there many years before. There's a bit of green grass in the background, but pretty much here it's brambles, soon to be blackberries in a few months. And over, as we walk a bit higher towards a gate, then we'll see in the distance would have been Crowden train station. So yeah, you must, um, do you still get excited when you come up and visit this, Mary, or the fact that you know someone who's got the key must be exciting i do but i will be even more excited when we can get it repaired and restored and it can be used by the community yeah really will be then yeah right well we will because it's such a shame that it's been allowed to go to rack and ruin through nobody's fault but as a community hopefully now we can get it back on its feet when was this last in use as a, as a proper church, do you know? Uh, we came here over six years ago and they were still running services then. Yeah. I think it was every fortnight. I'm not exactly sure of the date, but um, I think the person who organised it all unfortunately died. Yeah. And so it never kept up. But we've had lots of offers from Christian ministers who said they'd love to come up and do services. And it's a magical place, really. We've got to the top now and we turn to the left and there is the chapel. It's like kind of grey-brown stones that are quite thin, really. They're not like the kind of big, chunky stone houses that you often see around here. And then a little bit of stained glass window. And you guys have done an amazing job in clearing the graveyard because we can, as we walk up to the gate and step in, go and read and see this, which I imagine maybe a year ago or so wasn't possible. It was up here. It was so literally what's that? waist height. Waist height. Um, and we had a day up here with people from Tim Whistle and people from other areas who came. We put an event on Facebook and they worked so hard. And then Richard has been clearing the gravestones off. So hopefully this year it won't be so bad when we have our another event. Yeah. And then we had another event circling the inside of the church. So, again, hopefully we're going to have more of those this year as well as fundraisers. Right, well, should we walk towards it? Let's uh, keep walking and talking. We're going to step towards the the gate. We've got the key. Someone's passed the key to my hand. Um, It's a huge key. I'm told not to lose this key because it is the one and only key. Past a, a gravestone there that says Thomas Shaw. Another one here, Joshua Buckley. A Lillian written underneath. And the porch was rebuilt in 1924, which we think John Davies, one of the people who lived at Railway Cottages, as we turn our, you know, to the right, he helped as a child rebuild some of this. That would make sense. But, and inside it says St James Woodhead. This porch and the tablet on the north wall were erected as a memorial to those who fell in the Great War, 1914 to 18 made in September 1924. There's well, a list of the people who died later in the war inside, so you could see, see the names These inside. are things that we've got to keep going. I'm going to... Should I just knock first, you know? Yeah. It's always polite, That's isn't it? Yeah. Hello? No, no one's there. Um, I think we're safe. I'm going to put the key in. Oof, it's a big old key to turn. Here we go. I'm going in. How am I going in? No? Oh, thanks very much, Richard. <laughs> okay, I'm stepping into the chapel now, and wow, you can just hear how it is like you walking into a church. You can hear how it sounds different. Big, kind of like white walls. There's a hole in the corner, but I'll turn away from that, and you can see it needs, and see what you mean, it needs a bit of 
love and attention, but the pews here with like kind of red carpet on wooden wooden um, pews here. We've got the old the original harmonium which was given, I think, but I imagine it doesn't work. The collection pot here, St James Woodhead hymn numbers for board nearest organ. Please replace in correct slot after use. Yes, and I'm uh, touching all the numbers in there. Oh, there's a collection box here. And more hymn numbers. Yeah, the hymn number board's there for you to put the hymn numbers on, aren't there? See, we've got hymn numbers on here. I wonder if that is the actual hymn numbers from the last time. Six, seven thousand nine hundred ninety-six, eight thousand nine hundred sixty-eight, and nine. I wasn't here at the last time. I don't think they had eight thousand hymns. <laughs> it's a lot of hymns, isn't it? It's a hymn book about this big. Richard, you know, what was it like coming here to a service? The first service I came to was about 25, 30 years ago and Austin Hawksworth, who lived um, at what we call a bungalow on the road down towards Tentwistle, was a sheep farmer who lived with his mum, quite a shy, shy man. Um, and I think it was Roger, the solicitor, but they enjoyed putting on services only once or twice a year, but they actually wrote their own him music, oh, wow. which was difficult because nobody else had sung the music <laughs> before, um, but it came up in the evening, and it was it was it was very pleasant. And one one year, funnily enough, my wife was reminded we did actually come up. We had to walk up because of snow on the road, so we actually walked up walked up one this evening, and it was it was very pleasant, and yeah. people enjoyed it. Um, one or two people who were the trustees a number of years ago loved the chapel very much, um, and. One particular, I think his grandparents, I think, or I'm not sure his parents were married, were married here, and wow. they've had their um, relatives buried in the graveyard. So there's quite a feeling, quite mm. a feeling of, of ownership. Mm. Um, somebody, one of the people who's on the building some committee. I'm number three out of the three on this building, which is a good job because I can't build anything. Um, <laughs> but number two he was saying he would have, he'd hoped he could have got married here. He'd like to have been married here, but it wasn't wasn't possible yeah, for various yeah, different well, reasons. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. not licensed for weddings, funerals, christenings. However. We do have somebody in the village who wants to do photo shoots up here for weddings. Oh! So they could get married somewhere else and then come here and have photographs taken here. Wow. People keep asking her all the time, can we have photographs taken here? I mean, yeah, you know, it's... Why not? It's in pretty good nick, considering that, you know, this was... It's in Paris, wasn't it? 1700s, we think, this maybe this this version was built. I mean, it's definitely so. been topped I would, up. I would, I would think so. I think it's in tremendous condition. I, I mean, we've had reservations about spending time and, and money, perhaps, on maintaining the building. But I think it, it's in such good condition, in fact. The gutters need replacing, as, as, as you've heard. It's actually very, very structurally sound. It's mostly cosmetic and just keeping it going with certain things, like you say, the gutter and stuff like that. And the bell tower. The bell tower is just at the top. We can yeah. see the, the hole, yeah. and I understand the local farmers there. looking after that for you. And that's, co that's, co that's correct. There's a little, it's quite a reasonable amount of water coming through there, which is why we sort of feel there's a little bit of urgency to try and get that repaired. But we're hoping we're going to get that done by midsummer or, or, or the autumn. Once that's done, we can have all the electricity certified as being used. There's a bit of elect electrical circuit we can use, but some of the cables go underneath the bell tower. So because there might be water on, the volunteer electrician who's certified said, I can't certify it at the moment mm. until that's been. But once that's finished, we can use electricity uh, in, in the chapel. As you know, there's no toilet mm. and there's no running water. So. <laughs> what are you encouraging, Mary? No, it's a drain. That Richard's spending the day here. Yeah, yeah. We could either, if we were looking to put a toilet into it, there is a facility for a septic tank and a drain because Bleak House underneath will have a septic tank. Right. So, so the vision that you have for this place is really to bring it back into use, to bring it back alive, to have people using this space, mm -hmm. either from further afield or for the community. But I suppose the reality is, you know, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. You know, if you, you, you're kind of asking people, maybe who are listening even, or from the local community, if they can volunteer their help, if they are tradespeople, if they wish to help donate to kind of get, you know, get some of the work done that needs to be done to, to kind of keep this going. But if you, if for any reason this 
did fall out of disrepair and disuse, what would happen? Fall out of or into, you mean? Well, for, well if, if, it, if it just basically... Oh, you didn't disuse and disrepair. Yeah, yeah. This is very much third-hand information, but I heard in a conversation uh, that at one stage the church no longer could support the church or utilities. There was discussion about taking it down and leaving one metre of foundation standing. I think there's some legal reason why you have to do that. So presumably that would, that would, that would be an option. And I, think that I don't think residents of Crowden have allowed that, though, do you? Even if we don't get our dream of having it used as a community resource, I still think we've got the support locally to keep it going. Yeah, and it would be a huge shame if it did had to be reduced yes. down to a metre. I, mean, I think I, I, my, my feeling is, with some really quite detailed, sensible conversations, I think by Christmas this year, I think this building will be sound and, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be assured, unless something very strange happens, gets dreadfully vandalised or something, I think for the next 20 years. And I think... <laughs> I'm 72, so that'll do me, and I can keep coming up and cleaning it and looking up. But I, I think I think we'll get it secured. We've I secured, think so. well, we've secured it now because you can't get into it basically, which mm. what was what was happening before. So we've had a new lock, we've had a key, which is what the residents paid for. Um, all the other stuff, there's no way that anybody can really get in now to cause any damage. Mm. And we'd hope to keep it like that, and then just do the cosmetic stuff and like the hole in the ceiling restore the original bell because we have got the bell for safekeeping mm -hmm. and it'd be absolutely fantastic to hear it ring in the valley i would love to be there the day that happens i mean let's just kind of step back outside then and kind of just absorb where we really are to kind of bring the episode to the end um well i'm just walk back out to the porch and you know if you are someone that walks in this area maybe just um take a little extra detour and come and sit you know, on these steps, on this porch where we're standing right now and appreciate everything here and tell people about this chapel because the more people talk about it, the more that it kind of, you know, people remember it stays in people's memories, it stays, you know, online and digitally, take photos. We want people to make sure that this will be here for many generations to come because it has been here for so many generations before and I would encourage you to go and look at londondaletales.co.uk and read the history a brilliant article um well it's like a pamphlet I think that was written early 1900s by some printers who are based on Station Road um Hadfield if you know that area it's actually where the bakery is now it used to be a printer's and um, they wrote a pamphlet and in it it had a quote from the Manchester Guardian at the time which describes the weather um, here a bit like a scene from King Lear. And, uh, and it described, you know, the, the, the area where the farmers work now as a savage mountain. <laughs> you should come up next week because snow's forecast. Well, and the last time it was six days, wasn't it, we were snowed in? Don't say that. Honestly, I'm recording throughout the whole of March. Monday. I'll be here. <laughs> but, I, you know, I, I really say thank you because um, it's a real honour to be allowed through this door. Like I say, I've, I've walked here, I've looked up from the other side of the trail to this so thank you both of you for um letting me touch the key open the door and step inside and i really um appreciate what you're doing for the local community as someone who's not even from crowden so thanks so much i think we appreciate <coughs> with your connections you coming here to explain to people that we hope we can manage somehow to be not stewards in a way of the chapel but also of access to the chapel so people can use it people who are reasonably responsible can actually use it and get the same enjoyment out of it that, that we do well we'll leave it there for today hopefully you've enjoyed if you've been walking as you've been listening um walking around have a look around um the graveyard and interestingly if you wanted to take your walk a little bit further the path which leads up to the chapel is the old turnpike road which you can carry along and continue to walk further down the valley. Um, but yeah, another peer into another corner of the valley. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, let's find out where I'm going to be tomorrow and what the weather may be, hopefully not snow. Thanks very much. <laughs>